Hi, I'm Maggie, and I'm a beloved child of God, and so are you. So today we are in Matthew, and the Pharisees are still asking Jesus questions, trying to trip him up, and hoping that he answers wrong so they can either put him in prison or make everybody stop loving him and following him. And they ask him, what, what's the greatest commandment? And Jesus answers them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So Jesus, they, they, they say that the reason why they, the Pharisees have told the people that we need to do these things, we need to follow these rules and we need to follow these laws because we need to love God with our whole being. So we need to make sure that our whole being is honoring God. So he is kind of agreeing with them. They're like, okay, well, we can't really find argument with that. And they've also heard, they remember from Leviticus, um, the commandment that you need to love your neighbor. And in Leviticus, they, the definition of neighbor, it's not just your neighbor, it's also strangers. It's also the word alien. An alien is somebody who's from a different place. And most likely they don't look like you and they don't have the same cultures. They don't worship like you um, and they don't talk like you. So they're very different and we're supposed to love them. And Jesus also tells us we're supposed to love our enemies as well. So the idea of loving your neighbor and in the way that we love God. And here, here's an important point. If you love God with your whole heart, if you love God with your whole mind, if you love God with your whole soul, you know what else it means? It means that you have to love. You are loving everybody around you, regardless of whether how much you like them. You love them because, you know what? They are a reflection of God. They were made in the image of God too. No matter how different they are, no matter if they think differently from you, if they worship differently from you, if they act differently, they look differently, they smell differently, no matter what, they are also a reflection of the image of God. And in order for us to love God fully, you got to love them too. And the word love to us, I hear the word love and I think, oh, Valentine's Day, or I think, oh, the way I love my family, or a love song, or a, a rom-com movie that has, you know, somebody falling in love. It's emotional. It's The word passive means you don't really have to do anything to experience it. You're just, you're loving. When Jesus used the word love, and actually in this time when they heard the word love, it meant there was action involved. You are actively loving somebody. So you show them mercy, you show them kindness, you show them forgiveness, and there's actions of love that you show towards these people who may be your enemy. And um, here's a little tip. If you've got somebody who you don't like at all, and in fact, this person, and they may have been, you know, they may have been very mean to you, and you don't want to be friends with them, um, and they make you feel all tight and yucky inside, if you pray for them, if you pray, God, I'd really like to loosen up these feelings that I have inside of me. And you know what, God, I want to pray for this person. And I hope that they have a good day today. I hope that they have peace and love in their heart. And I really want good things for this person, God. If you pray like that and you make a habit of it, I promise you it's going to be easier to love that person. And you can love with actions of love. And so we're talking about loving your neighbor. I have this sheet and I really want y'all to take a minute and look at it. You can look at it on the email. You don't have to print it out, but it's helpful, I think, to print it out because then you can write down because there's a little activity that this is your homework. So in the middle, it says me. And then here it says immediate family. So that's like your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother. Um, extended family, that's, you know, grandparents, aunts and uncles, and then a classmate could be in your school class or maybe somebody from an activity that you do, uh, your neighborhood. Uh, you don't have to actually know this neighbor. You could just say, hey, those people in the Brown House, uh, your church, St. George's Episcopal Church, and the community. So if you 
want to say your city or your state or your country or the world. Write down one person or one example in each of these circles, please. And after you do that, I have put on the email a list of ways for you to show love to your neighbor. And there's 70 items on here, y'all. Some of them are easy. Some of them are just nothing, you know. Um, some of them take some action, but it's not a lot. And there's a, plenty of them that you can do during a pandemic. And this website's called Do Something, do something.org. And I love that because you can do something and um, show your love for your neighbor. And I also have a craft that is love God and others heart. And it's on here. And I'm going to have extras of these. I can have them at the church. And I'm also going to have them if you want me to mail one to you. I would love to because, okay, so you cut it out and then you cut the strips and you weave it together and it makes this heart. Isn't that pretty? I really like it. And you know, one of the things I like so much about it is how it's woven together, how our community is woven together. Like not a single one of us, even though we are living in a pandemic and you might not get to see anybody who but besides who lives in your house, you might not get to go out and be around friends. You don't get to go to church. You don't get to be in class. You don't get to do the things that you would normally get to do. But you know what? You are still surrounded by love and you still impact everyone around you and the things that everyone around you do impacts you. So we're all woven together. We are all joined together in this community and with love. And I would like for you to please um, do this craft activity. I'll have extras here at the church if you want to pick them up. Or like I said, I'll get them to you. Um, and I'd like for you to write a prayer or write some way that you can love your community on this heart and bring it back to me because we're doing something super cool at our church. We are making a mural. It's just we're putting lots of different pieces of paper and prayers and pictures and signs together in our narthex, so the, in the entryway of the church, um, that's called our Big Love Praying Wall. Um, our stewardship, our, well, our caring campaign is St. George's is telling everybody that they are loved because love abounds. God's love is so big, so big, and it's holding us all the time. And the love that we have for you we are holding you in love all the time. And we want to remind you that you are not alone. We are here. Your family is here loving you. So we're gathering everybody's prayers and thoughts and moments, and we're going to make it into a big mural. Um, so there's this. I would love for you to send that to me. That would mean a world to me. And I want to show you what else I'm going to put on the wall. We got some notes from some friends at the Emanuel Center because um, the No Sweat Soiree did a great job of raising funds, and we took them down there. And see, they made a really nice note. And this says, thank you, St. George's. It says, we are thankful for everything. And we got a bunch of signs and notes just like this one. And y'all, it filled my heart. I mean, I almost started crying. I was so happy to see it. And it's, it's a piece of paper and marker. That's all this child used, and it filled my heart, and I felt the love, and you can do that too. When you're making, you know, when you make a sign or a letter that you drop off or you send to a facility, and you can brighten somebody's day, it may seem like you're not doing something very big, but you are. You are making a difference, and you are spreading love. You are spreading love to the people that are close to you and that you see every day, and you're spreading love to people that you don't even know. And they don't have to know you either, but you are making the love spread around us. And one thing I want to mention, I thought of this when I was weaving this heart together. Okay, I'm going to tell y'all, it's not the easiest thing. Maybe it just wasn't the easiest thing for me to weave it together. It was a little difficult, so you might want to grab a, an adult. But here's the thing. I told myself I would get it messed up and I'd say, okay, it's okay, Maggie. It's okay. You're doing just fine and you're doing the best that you can. And you'll get it. And you know what? If you don't get it, it's okay too. I talk to myself like that all the time. Do you know why? Because I want to love myself. I want to love Maggie. And you need to love yourself because Jesus said it right there. Jesus said the first commandment, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And then he says the second commandment, which, which is like it, so it's just right up there with it, you shall love your neighbor 
as yourself. He wants you to love yourself abundantly. God made you in his image. You are precious. You are a child of God. You are important. You are special. And you need to love you just as you would love all the folks around you because God wants you to. It's one way that you can show your love and respect for God is to love yourself and say, thank you, God, for making me because I'm awesome and you did a great job. And you know what else? I love you and I hope you know that. And I hope that you have a wonderful week and I hope there's so many activities. Go find one of these activities, y'all. Do one every day. Do one once a week. Make it a regular thing with your family and spread the love and just spread it and spread it and spread it because you know what? It doesn't run out. In fact, the more you spread it, the more it'll multiply and the more love that you'll have and be able to share with others. And you can thank Jesus for that because it's a beautiful thing. Take care.